many questions uh, for the two of you, but I will start with the with a similar one for both of you. Uh, do you see your speech-based performances as performance as uh, is writing part of your performance? Because there is uh, this feeling of uh, I called it I call it with myself a generator. Huh? It's like your both of you. Uh, each uh, in, a, in a very unique way, uh, are like generators of, of, of words, of speech. Yeah? One word leads to another, one word generates the other based on phonetic uh, resemblan uh, resemblance, based on semantic resemblance, but there is this kind of flow that as if writes itself or did, uh, um, deduces itself, uh, generates itself. So, you see, uh, Hane, do you see writing part of your performative uh, practice? Mm. Do, you, do you see the text in your work as, as written text or...? Uh, um, yes, I, I mean, I, uh, it's, yeah, it's... The, I mean, writing is definitely part of... I see it more like maybe I would call it somewhat collaging. It is... A, of course, a writing process, but it's also very much about accumulation of texts that, uh, from different sources that I piece together somehow, either just through verbal recital or or actually writing them on a on a computer. Or it comes from it comes through different sources from notes written by hand, writing on a computer, and then also just reciting and. It always takes a different shape when you actually perform it. You never really know until you're in front of the audience. So it's very important for me to do the, to to have the performances in a space with an audience, mm -hmm. um, to keep the text alive. I would say. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's a multi-faceted um, process. I would say that is doesn't exclude anything. It doesn't exclude also writing per se, but uh, mm -hmm. I would say it's more collage almost mm -hmm. of text. Thank you. Uh, Jesper, maybe an input by you? Um, I mean, I think for a long, very long time, I, I, I uh, deliberately chose to not refer to myself as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, I think now um, I have to sort of acknowledge that I am writing. <laughs> to some extent. Uh, but I think my, my answer is in some respects similar to, to Hannah's because uh, I, I, for a long time I was using accumulation as a methodology to sort of bring language onto the page, or onto the phone, or wherever it, it happened to be collected. And then, then it took form in the editing process. Mm -hmm. So I think the this thing you're talking about where, where the language seems, one thing seems to lead to the other is maybe something that happens as much in, through a process of reduction as through a process of, of uh, expansion. So for you, writing is to edit yourself? Well, it's a combination, but I mean, I think all write, for all people who write, editing is a, is a massive part of that. Yes. But um, I mean, for me, the writing, the language is sort of something that I collect somewhere and then I allow it to sort of, I use my body as a tool, if you like, to edit the text. I often edit by reading out loud to myself. And then, um, you know, I sort of re-embody this language that I happen to either find or, or, or write myself. Yes. And in both your practices, uh, again, in a very uh, particular way uh, within each of you, um, Performance, lecture performance, uh, uh, speech-based performance, is not um, uh, is not an exclusive um, uh, line of work within your practice. So, uh, yeah, your practice is more than lecture performance. Nevertheless, you represent uh, the the um, uh, the most um, uh, uh, contemporary or or updated. Uh, form of lecture performances. Uh, can you explain how lecture performance operates within 
your whole body of work or your your entire body of work? Can you? Because you, you, yeah, maybe I will distinguish a little bit uh, within your work, uh, Hannah, uh, um, um, uh, language language rules your governs your work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can sub, I can distinguish it from Jesper's work that has non-verbal uh, parts of of, of 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 work. Yeah, but nevertheless, you are not just a lecture performer. You have uh, you have uh, your your practice is, is broader than this. Maybe you can give us some more shed some more light about. Yeah, I've also never really called it lecture performance. I think I just would call it plainly performance. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's I studied typography and graphic design, moved in towards uh, speech, moved from something visual, a word as a visual. Uh, yes. something very visual to something which is contained and recited by the body. So for me there was a lack of uh, physical, actual physical presence in a printed text. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, so I started out with performances and then gradually started also work, which is a way of working with space, the space of the room, the space between you and the audience, but then um, in the last, yeah, five, six, seven years, I've also been working with the space as a um, exhibition space with installations, sound installations, and more, yeah, something which is more permanent, still ephemeral and still very invisible, let's say, um, but still a sort of a idea of this voice of having a physical presence in the room, but then the speaking body is completely absent. So there's this two-sided. Yeah. Um, my voice is, is the only thing that really kind of binds these two, the performance and the, mm -hmm. and the installation. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, for me, the writing, well, the, 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 the usage of, of language came about as a, as another way to uh, make images, because I, I'm, I, I'm sort of come from a background of image making, and I still make images by way of sort of photography and paint and painterly methods. So it was it was sort of a way of escaping the image, mm -hmm. but still being with it. You know, still still being engaged in in this kind of inquiry as to what it might mean to, to, to capture and, and disseminate an image. And, you know, I think that my, my writings have evolved over the years, as m most things do. And, and they used to be, they used to be much more photographic, if you like. They used to be much more kind of, uh, you know, the language was captured. And now I think it's more composed. Now it's, it's moving towards something that is, as, as you said before, closer to writing rather than, uh, you know, something less, so. I have a personal question, uh, maybe it's uh, too personal. I open uh, brackets. Did you, when did each of you in, uh, know you have so, such, such a great voice that can really captivate, captivate an audience in, in such a way yeah, with with uh, with uh, with a text that is also very spoken, but it is as poetic as it is spoken. So you always knew you had these interesting voices. Mm, no. Sorry, I wanted to do it direct. Uh, no. Also now you have a great voice. Eh? It wasn't. Uh, it's it's. I mean, it was like. Uh, Hmm. I mean, it's it's, it's like always a, I think it's always a complex way to as an the artist like the path to like becoming a visual artist is very seldom very like clear what you're what the actual format you're going to end up doing and for me it was also very 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 late that I realized that what I was doing was something that was visual art per se and. Uh, I think the voice, let's say, was always there, but it wasn't spoken. So I would write, even before st uh, studying graphic design, I would write, 
and there would be a vocal presence in the writing. And when I was even younger, I studied, wanted to become an actress, studied theater and so on. So the voice has always been there, but no, the voice as an identity, the voice having its own identity, which I guess it has at this point. Yes. Um, it has an identity. Um, didn't come into play until the very end of my studies. And um, yeah, that was pretty much a like, kind of aha moment, but I cannot actually say the, the exact okay. moment when it happened, but it, yeah, it was a gradual, but I think it just was dormant and, and, and sort of came into, yeah, came into play at a quite a late point. Yes, sorry if it was too personal, maybe. It's not yes. that personal. I, do. I think <laughs> I you have the, the, each, each, each of the voices is very uh, different, but nevertheless, sometimes with simple text, uh, uh, there is something really, yeah, it's not easy to, 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 to capture an audience. And yeah, also with you, Jesper, and uh, of course the resonance in space of each of your voices is very different, but there is also something, yeah, in the beauty of the voice of each of you that uh, plays a role, I think. It's, and it's not just the text, and it's not just the... Um, I think, I mean, the, the strange thing about having that as your main material in your artistic practice is that it is also inevitably part of your daily life, and although, of course, the performing voice is a different one, it does sometimes like small snippets like return into your daily life. So when I say a sentence that exists in one of my works, I get a little, yeah. it's like almost like a sort of the a twitch. Collapses. And then I'm like, okay, well, never mind. This is my, mm. also okay. my life. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. That's the only thing that's kind of odd, I would mm -hmm. say about it. And Jesper, you see yourself as some kind of singer songwriter <laughs> uh, that can capture a crowd in a, is it, it's part of the, yeah, of course, it has to be, but yeah, maybe you don't need to answer it in a few. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think, I actually, I, I don't see myself as a singer. No, it was a, a, me, but, a uh, metaphor. But, you know, I think uh, these are sort of places, these are tools, if you like, yes. that, that can be used to... Uh, you know, enhance a crowd or communicate a text or produce an, ex an image or some sort of experience. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I, I actually prefer to separate the two, if you like. Yes. I, I think when, when I'm reading something with an, to an audience, it's, uh, it's, I almost feel like it's not me. I feel like it's something else. And then, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe um, a short reflection uh, before the before uh, wrapping it up. So also, I there are very beautiful similarities. But again, with the, when you start to when you find similarities, you also it articulates the 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 individuality of each of uh, of your work. But for sure, uh, you um, exploit the, the format of a, of a, of a spoken performance uh, in the sense that you deal with what does it mean to be a speaking body? What does it mean to, yeah, when your body speaks and when y your speech creates an image of a body which simultaneously pushes you away from the body but reconnects it from the body, so, uh, yeah, in, I think both of you do it in a, in a very uh, unique and, uh, and beautiful way, uh, each of you in, a, in, in, in their own way. Um, yeah, so it's very interesting because the moment you create a speech about having a speech, you immediately in the body. So dealing with language is dealing with the body and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, it can sound paradoxical somehow, contradictory somehow, but yeah, because language is what also pushes us away from the body, but it also allows us to, to reconnect to it somehow. So maybe a few words about this. I mean, I think for me that's definitely what, what, what is interesting, is how we can bring that, those, those things together. Mm -hmm. You know, and for me the body is a, a tool and, and that's equal to, to, to the language. 
uh, and and you know the two coming together is a way for for this this language to to produce an effect you know yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be physical yeah be physical but also you know a way to to hold knowledge and 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 disseminate this knowledge mm -hmm. in ways that uh, you know is sort of you know questioning the parameters of, of language per se and body per se, you know, and, mm -hmm. and sort of have them fold in on one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me it also has a lot to do with the idea of also control or like how we, in the performance itself, I, it's very, it's focused and I'm also trying to con somehow control language with both language and the body are things that are like, they're not actually fixed somehow. And, and also like emitting, like the voice itself is something that is often what can like, it, it can be surprising kind of what sounds emit, are emitted when you're speaking or it's something that like, yeah, I think it's like in general, I speak a lot about how the body, we are trying to control the body in so many ways through what social norms, uh, what is expected of us, um, and at the same time, it, there, it, is, it, is, it lives its kind of own life, and I think that's very much, yeah, what my work is about. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, I'm done, unless, yeah, <laughs> please. I'm far into my 30s, but... Uh, <laughs> we are way beyond our 40s, right? <laughs> Some of the texts that I read today was, um, were from 2010, mm. 2009. And I think it's just that you're... It's like a bit like what, when you write something, what I think is the most interesting about reading things for an audience is... As I said earlier, like this thing of discovering the text while you're reading it, and I've very often had that where the text exists on a paper, you read it and you read it and you read it, and you look at all oh, this. This is this work from 2013. Oh, okay, this is this, that, and you read it out loud, and by that being part of your body, it's part of your physical experience, and something comes to mind, and you're like, ah, like that's what I, ah, that's why I wrote this. Aha, and you don't understand that before ten years later, or. I think that's, for me at least, um, one of the most amazing things about having had a practice for so long also, that you just, yeah, and there's nothing I wouldn't, there's really hardly anything I wouldn't read that I wrote, like, or what is that now, 13 years ago? Um, so, yeah. Interesting. I have a question. Are you thinking about doing a collaboration with each other? Or? <laughs> Us three? No, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, but so maybe <laughs> I can rephrase you, Lotus. Uh, can performance be? Can yeah? Can can people perform together? This is maybe, but yes. this is maybe too big for now. But um, yeah, I mean, of course they can work, work together. No, I'm not sure. I don't know. I just, I mean, like an anecdote, like collaborations for me. Like some people always like, oh yeah, you put this and this. Yeah, like do that with that. It's that's hard for me at least. It's like I think people underestimate how much like how much work a collaboration sometimes take. For me, I work with some musicians that is like three years in and still it's kind of trying to find its form. Maybe that's my perspective, but I find that often people think things that are also thinking that things that are very similar would fit together, but I think it's rather often the opposite that you need someone who's like counter... I work with a saxophone player, for instance, who works with his breath, but it doesn't work with words, you know, and we, still, we both work with breath, so it's kind of, it, that's the meeting point, but it's, our practices are extremely different, for instance, but... 
Very good. What do you, think? you can say something. Well, no, we're not thinking about a collaboration. <laughs> Yes. How do you guys organize your material with something like text? How do you organize and refer back to an idea ten years ago, that sentence or something like? How do you organize it? Yeah. Archive yourself. I mean, I, I collect my things in a in a in a text document on my computer or on my phone. I used to write in hand a lot when I when I was more kind of. Uh, when, my, when I used to collect language more, I used to literally walk around and, and write things down. And then I would transfer it into a text document. So yeah, I mean, it's just in a text document. Yeah, it's more, like, I mean, it's also multi, small, I take small pieces of paper from like, what's it called, like uh, fortune cookies yeah. and uh, then, there are 600 notes on the phone, like, and I also have something called anecdotes, which is, I think, 50,000 words because it's whenever I find a sentence online. Because, yes, it is. It is like very. I need to put it all in that one document, whatever it is. Um, but it's very long, and then that kind of becomes somewhere you can find material. But yeah, it's. I think we're living in a sort of multi. Text. I don't know how. Like, I think also that's another part of, of my practice. This thing that text kind of goes through our bodies daily, and like we t chatting with like maybe I don't know how many you're chatting with a day, like 30 people. I don't know. One chats with so many people at the same time in so many different uh, um, mediums, and yeah, I think it's like an extreme level that we never talked to so many people at once and seen gotten so much text in and out of our body. Um, is there an intention of using the English language when you perform? Intention? Yeah, like, um, I mean, I think Jasper is from Denmark, right? So why would you use English for the performance? Or, and I, th I like looked at Hannah as well, and. Uh, you, I think you're based in Berlin, right? So then it's like, why would you use English specifically? I mean, I, I'm Danish, yeah. And, um, but I lived in England f for a long time. And I did a lot of my education in England. Um, so it just happened to be the language I started to write in. But apart from that, I think it was quite helpful to, uh, to start to write in a language that wasn't uh, mine in a, in a sort of you know, mother tongue sense. I think it allowed for a sort of a, a displacement and a freedom and a sort of uh, you know, a naivety to, to, uh, to be present. Uh, but you know, I think, as I said before, I didn't really used to write. I just used to like take other people's language, whether that was from uh, advertisement or uh, an existing text or, or so on. And then I think, as I became a, more accustomed with the English language, I started to become a better writer in it as well. Um, but I think, for me, for me, the helpful thing in terms of of of, of Operating in a, in the English language is that I'm somewhat displaced. Um, so yeah, I'm actually Norwegian by nationality, but I grew up speaking English at home because my father is English, which means that I've always spoken English, but in a sort of non-native English speaking way. Well, a native speaker, but like not in a in a country where people around me are speaking the same language until I reach a certain age where kind of or more or less everyone becomes English speakers, at least in Holland and especially also in Scandinavian countries there most people speak English. And I think, well, I'm using vernacular language, I'm collaging from different sources 
Um, that for me only works in English, and even if I speak German, it would only appeal to German speakers in that case, which is a much more limited audience. So I think, yeah, it's I'm speaking from this kind of perspective of having English. Everyone kind of also has a, their own relationship to the English language, um, personal one, and I also kind of have a very personal relationship to the English language in my own way. Thank you again for an incredible performance, Carmen. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you, Marie Jose, for this evening. Thank you. And uh, let's uh, let's call it uh, a night in the on the, in the bar, maybe. No. Okay.